Franzi, I think we're live on Facebook. I'm just going to give you the hosting abilities now. Mkwanzi, you're muted, um, but we love the energy that you had when you started off. Can you just bring it back? <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that again. Um, yes, how's this? I'm mute. Thank you. Thank you for the vote of confidence. As teach, guys. Uh, let me take this opportunity to greet you once again this afternoon. Thank you for the appreciation of the energy. We are live on Facebook. I'd like to believe it's that time of the day again. You couldn't be anywhere else. You have an appointment with 2.30 conversations. And remember, you also have an appointment next week with 9.30 conversations uh, so that you can continue this beautiful ministry that God has entrusted to us. So today, we, in our midst, uh, we have none other than those who may know Ujoy Malete. She doesn't like it here when we blow her on the body. Accolades. Uh, we'll just give it to her to run the show as she sees fit. Technically, so to say, she's one of us. I would like to put it that way. So welcome to 230 Conversations. I'm not going to be in the announcements today, uh, particularly for the reasons that um, it's a straightforward uh, conversation today. We're going to jump straight into it. So, but it's what we usually are accustomed to. Would you please follow us? Well, hold on to this. Two word conversations across all platforms, except for LinkedIn. Because obviously, uh, we are coming. Are we? Mm, yeah, ob for obvious reasons. LinkedIn, maybe, maybe as God pleases, and he creates a whole TV station a whole radio station out of two thirty conversations uh, as he pleases, then we'll get there. But two thirty conversations, Facebook, Instagram, SDA advertise, also similarly across all those platforms, do follow us straight away. All right. So welcome to two thirty conversations. I'm just going to take this quick opportunity to pray as I'm about to hand over to Joy. Okay, we're gonna dive straight to it. And I, I don't intend necessarily to keep her too long. She's, a, like I would say, she's accustomed. She's one of us technically. But with that being said, let's hear what God has prepared for us as he's going to guide the conversation. So I invite us to just bow our heads right now as we will pray and then we ask for grace from God. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, here we are with one of our own, John Malete. You have prepared her to take heed of the call uh, under the circumstances that she has. We would like to thank you that you have touched it. Um, you, you've ministered through her. You've prepared the process through her. Now we ask that you touch lives and you impact and transform them. May we live better than we are when we leave. Thank you for the international community that we are blessed with. Thank you for those who are all in, across all corners of the globe. With humility of heart, we humbly come before the throne of grace. We say, please, may you bless this ministry. May it continue to expand far and wide. We are about to hand over to our speaker. We ask that you help her to minister, you use her to minister through her to us. We commit everything to you. We have prayed all this, believing that you have granted us with the heart of faith in the mighty heavenly majestic name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Welcome one, welcome all. Welcome to 2.30. We are on personal finances. I'm just going to try and find a joy. As we hit the ground running, like I had said, if you were to ask me, we don't intend necessarily to uh, keep her too long, but we are going to allow the spirit to guide the conversation as we hand over straight to her. Joy, can I please have you on audio, number one? And then can I also have you on video as well? Well, can hi, audio? can you see my face? <laughs> yep. uh, well, your face, let me see. It's here. Is it here? It's here. 
Let me quickly see. Let me quickly. You can't see my face, but my face what? is here. But can you see my screen at least? I can see your screen. I'm looking for your face. I see your face. You can see yeah, my see face. face. I see your face. Excellent. And what Thank I'm you. Do now, I'm going to quickly pin you. Okay. All right. Are we good? We are yep. good. I can see your face right now. I'm switching to shared content. I see your. Okay, fine. I've pinned your shared content. I can see your face. We are 101 good to go. We are good to go. We are good to go. Let me quickly unmute you. Sorry about that. Sorry, I muted myself. It's okay. Um, okay. Thank you guys so much for having me again. It's good to be home. <laughs> and, yes, 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 yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you for honoring the invite, Joy. One of us. And, um, and thank you for, um, yeah, for, for everyone who is here uh, to join in and listen in on our conversation. Sorry, can I just have a quick two minute conversation with my daughter who is like lingering over my shoulder? <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Okay. No problem at all. All right. Thank you about that, guys. Okay, so we are talking personal finances. That was the mandate that we're given. I'm told November is the month of money. Uh, or we're talking finances um, at the very least. So today we are literally going to be looking at what are some of the things that um, you know are resulting in us having poor financial habits or what are some of the reasons you know that lock us into these poor financial um, habits so without really wasting further time maybe let me just kick off uh, but I do have a disclaimer in that you know it, it won't be worthwhile if we don't conversate so we need to be conversing we need to have a conversation we need to share right and for it to be a lot more meaningful so really what i'm going to point out here are really those those things that are going to lead us into having a conversation that are going to lead us into having a meaningful discussion so that we can help one another navigate our personal finances and actually improve on our personal finances right okay um and then me just why am i unable okay cool there we go so I, I thought maybe let's start with some sobering data. This is purely an article from the Business Tech. Um, and it's, it's, not, it's not so long ago that this article was written. It was written in May, on the 14th of May. And literally the heading and the highlight of the article speaks about struggling middle class of Africans who are spending more than half their salaries to pay debt. And did you hear that underlying middle class? So these are people that are earning more than 20K a month. And here, I, I'm not gonna read the entire article, but I just wanna highlight this point here. I'm not sure how I can move this. There we go. I just wanna highlight on, on this piece here that it says, although no, the nominal income is 7% higher compared to 2016 levels, when cumulative inflation, we know inflation to be you know, a, a result of the increase in the cost of living, when the total inflation over the five-year period has been 24%, the real income has actually shrunk, right, by 17% um, in five years. So real income taking into account or, or ignoring the impact or the effect of inflation. So many consumers are compelled to borrow to make up for the shortfall. So look at this. Cumulative inflation over the five-year period increased by 24%, but income levels declined or shrunk by 17%. So in other words, if we were to take this and forecast it, right, and look at what the future looks like, we can see that the cost of living is growing faster, it's accelerating faster than the income that we are generating, right? So keep that, mark that as we continue with this conversation. And here it Dead Busters shows, which is a debt management company, it shows that people applying for debt counseling with take home, pay over 20,000 per month or take home pay rather, they of over 20,000 per month are spending over 60% of their monthly income to service debt and have a persistently high debt to income ratio 
of over 130%. So this means that for every one rand of debt, for every one rand you earn, you've got 130 of debt, which is quite a lot. So that means we are pretty much living beyond our means at this point. Um, and this is just, again, same article. We're just looking at stats here. We can see middle class, right? So those earning more than 20K a month, we can see how that, that, that grows faster. So that has grown quicker in the last five years. Um, and, but we can see all the various income levels are increasing. And this is the level of unsecured debt. And we know when you're talking unsecured debt, we're already eliminating home loans, vehicle finances. We're talking really credit cards. Um, we're talking personal um, loans. We're talking everything that does not have security to back it up. And we know that that is the most expensive kind of debt, right? So we can see Ubutsinje, it hasn't, it's not a pretty picture. Even for the first quarter of 2021, it hasn't been a good picture to behold. So if you are interested in going and reading about this article, just go struggling middle class Africans are spending more than half their salaries to pay debt. And then a business tech article should be able to pop up. And then you should be able to read that and just have a look at the statistics that are available in the market or that are available on, on the internet. And why is this? As young people, we are bold, we are fearless, we are ambitious, we adapt. So we are not afraid of taking risk, which is a good thing, right? Because it can yield good results for us. But at the same time, we've got the YOLO mindset. And the picture or the idea today is that we shouldn't let the YOLO mindset scrub our future. And in other words, we need to remember that although, yes, we only live once, but we also grow old. So we need to balance it out, right? We balance the fact that, yes, we live once. So do we deprive ourselves? of whatever it is, the niceties that we want to have in this life as young people versus the fact that we are going to grow older, right? And, and as we grow older, it doesn't mean that all of a sudden we don't need money to survive. And in fact, our income shrinks as the older we grow, right? When we, when we start reaching retirement, uh, retirement age, there's nothing coming in, unless obviously you've bought wealth for yourself over time. But we just need to understand that when we are old and we've reached that retirement age, we can't really make much money, right? And some of the biggest money challenges, right? One is the fact that we lack the skill of budgeting. We don't know how to budget, right? Or we don't budget at all. The second biggest problem is that we often live beyond our means, right? The third one is peer pressure, pressure, trying to keep up with the Joes. So you're trying to keep up while your friend is trying to keep up with you, while you're trying to keep up with your friend. You see how it goes, Moss. You're trying to keep up with your friend. Your friend's trying to keep up with you. Ganjalo, ganjalo. So you keep raising the bar for each other each time, and yet both of you can't even afford the lifestyles that you're living. So the mentality of trying to keep up is what is messing us up. And uh, the last bit or the last point that I wanted to mention is the fact that we aren't saving. And I think pretty much we've seen from the statistics that um, we've locked ourselves in debt. And that's the reason why we don't have surplus income to save or to even invest, let alone to invest. How do we navigate this and how do we break the cycle? Plan, 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 right? We need to plan. And, um, and, and what I like is that, you know, every topic or everything that affects humanity, God is interested with. So everything that is happening in your life, God has an interest in. So we see here, Luke uh, chapter 14, verse 28, it says that suppose one of you wants to build a tower, won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? You don't just go ahead and start a whole building project without sitting down and understanding how much money is coming in. How much am I actually going to need to pay the contractors? Will I have enough? How much longer will I have to plan for this project? So we need to sit down. Financial planning is mentioned in the Bible or planning for that matter. 
Proverbs chapter 25, verse uh, chapter 21, verse 5, it says, the plans of the diligent lead to profit, as surely as haste leads to poverty. So sometimes, you know, this rush that we are in, this whole, I want to accomplish so much, and I don't know what where the standard is coming from, is actually leading us to poverty, to be honest, because we are locking ourselves into things that are not necessary. You ask yourself, why am I borrowing? Why am I borrowing this money, right? Why am I incurring this debt? We don't know, you know? Um, so that the haste, you know, the impulse, yeah. the impulsive spending um, patterns and habits that we have are going to certainly lead us to poverty. Proverbs 15, 22, then goes further and says, without counsel, plans fail. But with many advisors, they succeed. So if you know, Guti, actually, I'm poor at financial management, seek counsel, get someone to assist, you know, get someone to help you plan better, get someone to help you navigate your finances better. Okay. Um, and that's why we speak budget, budget, budget. That's part of financial planning. We're talking budget. And we see again in Genesis chapter 41, verse 34 to 36, because budget is literally, a, you know, planning for the future. So let Pharaoh appoint commissioners over the land to take a fifth of the harvest of Egypt during the seven years of abundance, okay? They should collect all the food of these good years that are coming and store up the grain under the authority of Pharaoh to be kept in the cities for food. This food should be held in reserve for the country to be used during the seven years of famine that will come upon Egypt so that the country may not be ruined by famine. So again, we see, Oguti, it's planning for the future, right? It's future planning, which is something that we ought to do. You don't live just for the now. You need to plan for the future because you don't really know what's going to come. At least they knew that, they, they, you know, through Joseph, they knew what was going to happen. So we need to always plan for rainy days. I mean, COVID, as an example, was a big shock to, to many people and the systems of many because we did not plan, right? And we always need to be ahead. Ecclesiastes 11.2 says, invest in seven ventures, yes, in eight. You do not know what disaster may come upon the land. Again, an emphasis to what I've just spoken about in the, and the importance of planning the importance of making sure that, you know, based on what you know, put reserves aside to cater for what you don't know that might come up in the future. Debt, which is what we're talking about here, the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is a slave to the lender. And that's exactly what debt does to us. We become in debt, we become slaves to the to the to the to our creditors right so the data becomes a slave to the creditor and that's how the rich become richer because they lend this money we borrow and we become their slaves essentially so we need to break the cycle right how do we break the cycle we talk finances openly at home which is very key and why am i saying this is because financial illiteracy is part of what we as black people inherit, unfortunately, is that we watch our parents make poor financial decisions and we receive minimal teaching because we don't talk finances around the table. In turn, the children internalize and observe these bad habits and then they develop themselves, you know, limited financial literacy. And then what happens, these children grow up to be parents themselves who have no financial literacy to teach their children finan financial illiteracy. So the cycle then continues. So therefore we say that the burden actually rests with the parents. Why? Because the schools do not have enough of this. They aren't teaching a lot of this. And even if they do, it's only theoretical. But how do we make it practical with our kids? You sit down around the table, you say, this is the income that is coming here, that is coming at home. This is what goes for, uh, you know, this is what we set aside for God's time, right? And we speak openly about these things. So they understand and they understand the importance of money that when a child is asking for something, you don't just give them. They need to understand that you work for money. You know, money just does not fall, 
you know, from, from the sky or you don't pick it from trees, that it's something that we work for. So we need to start modeling this thing to our kids so that they understand what it means, you know, what, what it means that actually to get something you need to, you buy, <laughs> you know, the other day I was watching my kid go, to, so we went to spa and I did it deliberately. I parked in front of the entrance. That's the spa and I gave her money. I gave her a hundred rand note and I said, go to spa and go buy bread with a hundred rand notes as I was watching so that she can understand that to get bread, you need money. So if you don't have money, you won't get bread. I don't know if you get my concept, but it's to understand and to understand the importance and the value of money that when you use money, money depletes. So there were so many lessons that were embodied in that lesson that I was trying to teach her as I stood, as I drove, as far, mama and I gave him, she's seven years old, by the way. I stood outside and I gave her the money and I said, go buy bread, you know? So it's, it's all about giving kids those practical lessons that they understand and they value money. And they also learn that if they don't work, they will not eat, okay? And secondly, we need to pay off debt. That's the only other way to really free ourselves, to break the cycle, is to start paying off our debt. You might think it's difficult, and I think these are some of the conversations that we will get into as we go deeper into the conversation. But it's very important that for us to start liberating ourselves, right, and, and um and this whole financial freedom concept that we're talking about is we need to rid ourselves of debt. We need to start slowly and surely closing off our debt, right? Instead of getting on it or incurring more debt, it's to close off the debt that we already have. And, and, and that's the practicalities of it. And that's where budgeting comes into play. That's why budgeting and planning is so important because then at that point, it forces you to sit down and literally have an assessment of your finances, assess what your financial situation looks like, and then start planning because if you avoid it, it's not going to go away. So if you avoid facing um, your financial issues, they are not going to disappear. So at, at some point in your life, you need to own up. At some point in your life, you need to sit back and say, how do I manage this? How do I take care of my finances? Uh, thirdly, we need to live within our means. I cannot emphasize that. I cannot not emphasize that enough. Do not spend what you don't have. And that's the principle. If you don't have it, don't spend it. Because you don't know whether you will get it in the future. So you can't necessarily spend today what you think you might get tomorrow. Where a lot of us, December is upon the door. We are getting annual bonuses at work. And before the bonus comes, you've already spent it, Agafi, but you've already planned and spent for that bonus that hasn't arrived. And then guess what comes December, the company says, the company do not make enough um, to even pay you guys a bonus. What happens? Mental illness, we fall into a depressed state and we actually start increasing all these other elements and ailments in our bodies that are costly for us because of our own doing. Do not spend what you do not have, right? Many, too many people spend money they haven't earned to buy things they don't want to, to impress people they don't like. And that really is what it is, is that sometimes you have, or you own something, you don't really, you don't really want it, but because it's part of the trends, because it's part of what's happening and what's popping in our time, you want to own it. Is it really important? And I'm sure iPhone is, is happy because people, I mean, I've been seeing people posting, what's your, the iPhone, is it an iPhone, is it the iPhone 13, where people are boasting about um, being on the, on the waiting list of the iPhone um, and iPhone stores sending them messages that, um, uh, sorry for the delay, your iPhone, you know, uh, you, we still have you on our list and, and things like that. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, it's 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 wonderful if you do have the money for it but in most instances we know it's really things that we want to impress with and we want to impress others with and it's really not necessary so we need to start learning to live within our means if we don't do that we are only destroying ourselves 
right? We are only destroying our futures. And I think that's really the point and the last point that I really want to leave, leave with us as we begin this conversation, as we start engaging further in terms of how do I do this? Where do I start? Um, how do I even budget? Because I know a lot of people are actually struggling with it. And what I actually wanted to do here as well, maybe I'll just stop sharing this particular screen, but just to give you a practical and just make it a bit practical for all of us before we actually get into the question and answer session is um, I'll just present something that just sharing my experience or the experience that we have as a family. Um, and just let me know if you can see my screen. Leander, I'm waiting for your cue. You let me know if you can see my screen. I can see your spreadsheet. You can see my spreadsheet, right? A typical yeah. accountant who has got a spreadsheet. Like but a typical literally, accountant that you <laughs> But literally, this is what we do at the beginning of each year. And this is just an example. So I had to tailor it to, to make an example, um, which is a template that I shared with, with someone else. Um, to say, it would see, see, now every year, beginning of the year, we sit down as a family. And we say, okay, uh, what income is coming into the home? Uh, tithe and offering, obviously, uh, the first thing that has to go out, it's not yours. And then this is my disposable income, essentially. This is my disposable income. Then you go down and you write all your expenses, home loan, car loan. We all know some of us, we need to take care of our families. I've just literally labeled it black tax for lack of a better word. School fees, you have all your insurance covers. You've got all the costs for keeping up your home. You've got your cell phone and data costs. You list all your expenses as detailed as getting down to the bank charges. Can you see how minute detailed the spreadsheet is? You go down your entertainment, you list it down, your gym, your groceries, your fuel, and any other expenses that you might have in your home. You literally go down and you list and you list. And I'm hoping that at the end of that, you, let, you are left with at least a surplus, right? And then you go back and say, okay, what are my current investment allocations? And you write, okay, these are what I've invested in you slot down okay what's the surplus after that right then what are my financial goals allocation of the net surplus do i want to increase in my home loan do i want to increase on my investment a you know what's the monthly stock investment that i want to have what other savings am i saving for am i saving for a wedding you know you list all these other things and then you go down what are some of the projects that we want to take as a family this year and you go as far as planning for the year okay so we want to install new wardrobes how much is that going to cost you put down estimates when do we want to do that? We want to paint, you know, we want to do landscaping, we want to renovate the back, whatever it is, you put target dates. And then you start planning accordingly and say, whatever surplus I have at the end of me taking care of my financial goals and other things, literally, as you can see, all these financial goals are going towards, you know, reducing your debt, you increasing in, on your home loan, and also towards your investments and your savings. Right, and you say this is what I want to do. These are part of my financial goals, and anything else that's left over, you plan it according. Right, because now we say we don't want to spend what we don't have. So now let's plan. We're going to plan. Okay, we're going to save up for the wall drops by June. We need to have this money. Okay, sharp. How much are we saving each month? All of that you list it down, and literally this is how you make it practical. You need to sit down, and have these con, and you revisit the spreadsheet. You know, you revisit it and you say, actually, look, this is where we are. This is what we had intended spending. How has this, how has this shifted? You know, and you adjust as you go along. And I just wanted to also show you a practical example of the home loans piece or element in that if, say, you have your outstanding balance at the beginning of the year um, of 800,000 on your home loan, as an example, which whatever it is, it could be 500, it could be a million, it could be whatever. Uh, for you. you, you you put it down. Um, what and you play around with this, and this is where I really. I want you guys to focus on play around with the interest rates because Leander is the electricity yeah the electricity is there can you hear me right. yes 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 I'm right here 
Okay, sorry. I, I, my, I, my connectivity was a bit shaky. So I'm just wondering if you guys have been able to hear me all the time. We've been hearing you all along. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, so this is where I really want you guys to focus on, right? Um, is on this particular play around with interest, the current interest rate. And why am I saying this is because we've seen the lowest interest rate um, over, you know, in, in, in such a long time, right? We, we've seen the lowest interest rate as the, as, as the Reserve Bank has been cutting down on interest rates. And this is obviously going to change. So if your home loan is based on this, just play around with this figure and see exactly how your installments, your monthly installments are going to increase by. Play around with this figure. And even as you are planning to buy your home, do the same thing. Play around with this figure and see if the interest rates were to go up, say to 10%, would I still be able to afford this home that I'm looking to buy? So it's all about planning, right? And if you want to make additional payments, just test it out. So I said here, just by paying an additional 3,000 Rand, right, into your home loan, you will see that in this example, just by increasing by 3,000 Rand, you are reducing your repayment period from 240 months to 121 months. So literally by 10 years. And you would have saved over 370,000 in interest. And that's how massive the difference is. So, and I say, when I say 3,000, this is just an example, it could be as low as 500, but any little bit that you throw towards your debt goes a long way. It goes a long way. So I really want to pause here and get us to engage and to really talk as I stop sharing my screen. Over to you, Leander. Okay. All right, we are still with you here. All right, yeah, so that's a sharp. See, so that's a sharp. Okay, Saints, do you appreciate the importance of taking care of small, small, small details? Thank you so much, uh, Joy, for that. We appreciate it. And yeah, thank you for breaking it down and highlighting what is important. Um, yeah, I'm just letting it all sink in, right? I'm letting it all sink in. And if the approach is like this, everything falls in order. Everything pretty much falls in order. All right. Okay, guys, let's have a conversation around this. I know, Joy, you always come ready. Well, I want us to talk, Lee. I want us you to always come because... ready with a conversation. I know you. That's I know how you we make. Know. That's how we. That's how we grow, right? We want to. Yeah. We want to break the cycles of financial literacy. So let's talk. Let's engage. How do I do it? I'm. I'm ready yep. for those questions. <laughs> Definitely. And some of us, ne? I've got a friend. He wants to buy his house cash, and he has infected me with this, you know, urge and desire to buy my house cash, no installments. And, and this could be achievable. This could be very much achievable and we'd like to achieve that. So let's have a conversation since, let's talk since real little joy, powerful stuff that are being said. All right, let's talk. Can we have, can we see raised hands? As I'm quickly gonna switch on the light, let me give to Google. I've asked you on YouTube, please go ahead, man. Let's have a conversation. Kuku, I've asked to unmute you. Okay, there we go. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. What did I do? I was clicking, asked to unmute. Go ahead, ma'am. Yes, 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 yes. Hello. There we go. My leader. Google, we can hear. Oh, I've asked you on YouTube, Google, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Hello. Yes, sir, I don't know you can I'm hear you. I can't hear anything from my side. Okay. We can okay. hear you. Can, oh, we can sure hear you. What's happening? Right. 
to do so again. Let's try one more time. I'm not going to mute. Let's try one more time, Kuku. Hi, Leander. Yes, sir. I can hear you. you, can hear you okay, I'll you. assume that I'm audible. Yes, yes. Um, thanks, Joy, for the presentation. Um, great insights. Um, I just have a question around the issue of, in, I mean, um, saving. If we look at Okay, we are losing him, Ganani. Let's try one more time. I've asked you to admit you. I know it's an important question. Go, go. He never speaks in the voice back. Go ahead, sir. Um, sorry, there. I'll continue assuming that I'm audible. Yes, um, go on. If you look at the issue of saving, I might have missed some of the portions of the presentation. But if you look at the kind of plans that and the interest rates that the banks give, to their um, customers, how realistic and helpful is saving through the bank? Um, and the, if you look at the, the mega interest rate really that you get from the bank, is it still um, you know, um, correct to urge uh, people, for example, to, you know, have those kind of your traditional conventional savings with the bank. Um, can there be other maybe financial products, financial um, approaches that could be considered that can yield, you know, a better result and maybe even on a better turnaround in terms of time frame? How useful is saving through the bank in 2021? Thank you. Okay, 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 okay. Joy, before opening, Mulani, can we also just um, maybe see Kanganis and combine it with this comment that we just got, and it's very personal uh, to this person. So I'm going to read I it. Read, I read the you question. Read it. Yeah, let me read it for the purpose of the Facebook community. And then so we get an Otani after that, and then you'll just try and capture all three. Né? Now, for the purpose of the Facebook community, I thank God for this program. This morning, I was crying out to him, him being God, I assume, saying to him, hmm, I got paid, but now I'm sitting on 150 on the 13th hmm, until month end. I have not worked for the past seven years. This is why. 2.30 conversations is, all right? I have not worked, uh, worked for the past seven years and started a small business, which after I also do my type, all right? Groceries for the business. I'm taking care of my sister and her two children and me and my, and my two children. Uh, the income doesn't get to 3,000 rand at times. I have the spreadsheet but I failed sobbing. I have promised to buy myself other slippers. I couldn't. I'm sure there's something I am doing wrong. And Ashley is pleading which please can uh, joy address this. So I'm gonna give U Tandiwe and then CBL CBC Logo Joy until you come second time around. I've asked you on YouTube Tandiwe. Um thank you so much to take the conversation. Very, very useful. Um, just three things. One, um, thank you so much to the presenter as well. Um, very practical, straightforward, you know, things that one can use in their life. Thank you very much. I just yeah. wanted to point out um, what's your view on cryptocurrency um, with the future that is um, in front of us. I read an article during this week that South Africa is eventually and finally getting into crypto. Um, would you advise Adventist to venture into that? How reliable, how secure is the market? That's number one. Number two, um, I think it's just the, it's, it's, it's sooner than we, we can imagine or think that um, 
cash will be of no use um, in the near future. And the issue of buying and selling as recorded in Revelation 13 will soon be upon us in the next few years, you know, in a couple of years, not, not even over a decade. It's just a fact. Um, how far along would you advise an adventist to save and invest? Um, number three, do you think it's time to buy and invest in property or it's time to sell property and invest in evangelism? I am struggling with that and I would really would like your honest view. Lastly, this is just for my own personal journey. I have learned that um, it's not when you give tithe um, that your salary will be stretched, but it's when you give free will offering. This is just my personal journey and I can share you know, an example or two. The blessings for our finances lies in free will offering and it's very difficult because you have given god his 10 percent you return it it's non-negotiable the 90 percent the 90 rands out of 100 rand is very difficult to determine to say out of the 90 rand lord how much are you worth and i've seen in your spreadsheet you know you've got two or three items for giving and you know that's the way to go with with god god will stretch when you give free will offering, because he does not determine your percentage. He does not mandate it. It's up to you. And you see, when you are given free will to, to give, that becomes very difficult and it's a matter of the heart. Um, thank you. Over to you, Joy. Thank you. Uh, thank you for those very interesting conversations. Oh, you can already hear my disclaimer that I'm not a financial advisor yet. <laughs> but also on yeah. cryptos, but let's, let's, let's start with, um, but obviously we just have to do that. I'm not a registered financial advisor. So everything I say should not be taken as financial advice, which is a correct disclaimer to make up front. Um, the, 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 the first one who mentioned or asked was around the practicalities of saying, saving by the bank. And I think that there's so many different vehicles of saving one or investing because there is a difference right between saving and investing there's a different there's a different one so saving usually we refer to that if it's something that's really six six months it's short term driven and you are literally saying oh, in, in three months time i want to buy this and you save that up because really you don't want to expose that money to a lot of risk right and we and and, and we basically saying the principle with investing is um, high risk, high return. And I think we've had a conversation about this previously, which Unozi was, um, was leading around the making investing practical. Where do I start, right? Do I, I need to, because it's about having your financial goals and not shifting the goalpost and understanding that it's actually for a longer term purpose. So if you're saving for retirement, keep it as you're saving for your retirement. Don't then, once certain things change, you want to all of a sudden now tap into those funds. Try and, try and keep it in that manner. And once you start saving for retirement, obviously you wouldn't go, you wouldn't go um, to a bank for that. Saving is really, really short term. You, it's like something near three months. I just want to put money aside so that in three months time I can do this or six months time I can do that. That that's really what saving is. Um, and you're right with with financial institutions. If you if you are going to go to a bank, obviously because I mean that money is not exposed. When I say exposure, it's not exposed to risk. So um, that money is obviously not going to generate much income. And obviously taking that into account, not only are you earning interest on it, but you're also paying service fees on that money. So that's something else to look into, right? Um, and if, if you are going to say, maybe look into unit trust, um, and what people don't know is that sometimes when you're dealing with financial advisors, sometimes negotiate the fee if you can. If you are dealing with if you, your asset management, if you have the appetite, sometimes negotiate the fee. And in most instances, especially if you do not have a financial background, you are often going to um, use the services of an intermediary, 
right? You are going to use the service of an intermediary and that intermediary is going to charge you fees. So always try and understand what is the collective fee that I'm going to pay for this investment and then weigh it out. Say, if I'm going to pay X percent, right, on a monthly basis for my investment versus um, X percent, which is not necessarily guaranteed in terms of returns, is it really worthwhile? So always do those assessments and, and check it out. If you get stuck, call me, it's fine. I'm happy to give you that advice and say, what's the total? What's the total uh, uh, cost that they are charging you versus what they're promising you as a return? You know, it's very easy to do the math, but sometimes you can get locked into that. You, you, you might not see the full picture, which is what you really need to see when you're assessing whether is it a worthwhile, you know, trust to go into, or is it a worthwhile, um, you know, um, whatever it is that I'm willing to go into. Okay, so that's one. The second bit, which I think Unozi expanded a lot on was easy equities. We do have platforms that are actually now catering for us to say, because must beggar in the past, you really had to have a lot of money for you to go into the stock market, right? You had to have a huge sum of money um, to be able to open an investment account in the stock market. But now we've got platforms like easy equities, which are making it easy and easy, yeah, for us to actually tap into the stock market, which then again, we know that the stock market carries a higher risk and therefore there's a potential of higher returns. So again, it's that whole principle and concept of high risk, high reward, okay? And, 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 and that's really what you play around with. And once things start tanking, you obviously need to ride the wave. You wait it out. And that's why it's called investing because it's for the longer term. So you can't take your money to the stock market for something that you want to buy in three months because you don't know, you know where you, the, the markets are volatile in the short term. But over time, when you look at it, you can see that over time, even with the volatilities, over time, it, it's got a, a smoother trend that you can see in the market. So it's it's about looking at the different options. And if you're saving for longer term, if you're investing for the longer term, definitely do not go for um, for emailing Asebens. Make your money work for you so that it can grow. But if emailing Asebens, email bank, essentially that's what I mean. Emailing Asebens, email bank, okay? So I'm not sure if I've, Google, obviously I, 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 it might be a very broad answer and you perhaps want specifics, but you'll just let us know if, if that covers at least the basics of what you were asking. Um, the second one, um, the second one that we are talking about was cryptocurrency. And again, my disclaimer, I'm not, I, I, I do not want to share views of, of crypto because I'm not in that space. And secondly, I just have my own views about it, which I think I don't want to taint your views about crypto. Do you get what I mean? Um, it's, it's, I, I just have my views and I've got my strong views about cryptocurrencies, but maybe it's because I just haven't invested much time into learning about the crypto market. So uh, please forgive me, Tandiwe, for that. I just, uh, it's not something I would like to venture into um, in cryptocurrency. <laughs> And then uh, with regards to um, saving and investing, I think you were asking about, and you were asking about um, whether we should be buying or selling property um, at, at, at this time. You know, well, we, we, we know, and, and, and we know the instruction, right? And I think in as much as we are all waiting, we are waiting for Christ's return. Right, but there also needs to be a balance because while waiting, we have to work. While waiting, um, we, the, the instruction was also clear, move away from the citizen. We can see that the end is near, right? And that really is something that you, Tandiwe, in your own personal studies. Uh, thanks, Nozi, I want to invest my savings, if any, okay, cool. Um, it's, it's, it's really about where are you? It's, it's, it's a matter of, I mean, how many times have we been reading get out of the cities, but we're still stuck in the city. So it's about your personal convictions, right? And how true you take the truths into your hand. Are we going to be part of the five, you know, the five uh, virgins that knew, but were ill prepared, right? Because they didn't have enough oil in their lamp. Are we going to be the other five who knew, but were prepared for it? So again, it's, it's, it's a very, I wouldn't say it's a finance related sort of conversation or discussion, but it's, it's really a spiritual one and a spiritual conversation that we perhaps need to have 
a discussion about in the future. But right now, while we zooming in and focusing on personal finances while we're here, which is of interest to God, I think we just need to be wise because it's it's just what a good steward is supposed to do. And just maybe just to also stretch out on your, on your comment, you are right. We need to make time. We need to give. And I, and I think we uh, some of the less, the lesson, I don't know if you listen here the past two weeks or the lesson that we've been reading that actually emphasize on the fact that, you know, when you are blessed, you're blessed to bless others, right? So that emphasize that, you know, we need to take care of, you know, the, the foreigners, the widows, the poor in our midst. That was, that was the lesson that say, if you are given, you need to be able to bless others around you. So um, you are very right there in that um, we need to be a gift, you know, to others as much as we are given, we need to extend God's blessings to those around us. Um, so that really is it. Um, and, and I suppose, depending on your personal convictions, um, you are going to sell, you have to determine when the time is right to sell and move out of the city and invest in evangelism. But really that is a, it's, it's a faith issue, I think. And it's something that we do know. So I, I don't know, but I, I just don't wanna labor much into, into that one, if, if that's okay with everyone. I'm not sure if I missed any other question, Lou. Um, nope, we've so spoken far. about cryptos, so we've far. spoken about savings and investing, financial instruments and the like. Yeah, so far we're on the ball. Uh, maybe I don't know if Udungan Daba uh, would want to also raise his hand, but presumably, let me just read the comment for the purpose of the Facebook community. You could perhaps maybe touch on it when you come around the second time. Oh, sorry, um, sorry, I didn't touch. I didn't touch on. Um, sorry, Uluyan Danube's question. When I, when I, um, the, if maybe okay. we can go to that one. Um, go ahead, which, go ahead, man. which is a struggle for many South Africans, to be honest, right? Where, um, and and you've got so many elements in here, right? Because you have not only your family, but you've got your sister's children you've got your sister. So there's so many other elements and it's something that I do not want to turn a blind eye on and mm. to say, I'm ignoring the fact that sometimes in all honesty, you want to, but there's not enough coming in. Mm. And how do we navigate that? And I still think sitting down because that moment of, I don't know, it, it's just that moment of sitting down with your finances. And, and maybe I'm talking from a point of privilege and maybe I don't really understand Luanda and, and, and maybe guide us here um, as you come in Luanda and Nube, right to say I'm talking from a point of privilege but I really believe it's when you sit down and actually say listen this is and don't give up because you say in your comment you say you have that spreadsheet sit down and say in your variations because then you start seeing the pattern sit down as much as you pray about before you actually do that as much as you pray before you actually do your budget but sit down and actually track track your spend, track where you're using your money, track how much is coming in and, and see what that does for you. Because like you say, sometimes it's, there's just not enough income that is coming in. And, and unfortunately it is a reality. There's just not enough income coming in. And what do I do in those instances apart from augmenting the income? And you can't even cut further down on your expenses. It becomes a difficult situation. And it's something, unfortunately, right now, I don't even know how we navigate it if there is no other means of augmenting the reality, of augmenting your income, because that's really where it comes in, right? It's augmenting that income and saying, if I'm only getting so much, how do I expand on that little that I'm getting? Because to be honest, some people do get the, so whatever it is that we get is enough to feed us. And, and, and that is it. And that is just the reality of many South Africans, unfortunately, um, or a lot of people. And yeah, like I say, Leander, please maybe just share with us how your journey with the spreadsheet has been and why you feel like you're failing with the spreadsheet so that at least we, we can try and help each other on this platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, thank you so much. Tumanda was says practicality, so the suggestion is, could we use a example of somebody who's getting paid 7K? Because most of us who are here are between that uh, class five, seven, 7,000 to 15K, and we do not have a home. But maybe we'll attend to that a little later. So let's have another round of hands uh, in this order. 
Kalen Okuku might be a follow up on a comment that he has made earlier. Slandele Motolani, Sitrena Mozazo. Van Hidden, you let me know if your hand is still up. Okay, we'll come back again with the more Van Hidden. Okay, tell you what, let's do this. Let's do that. Kalen Okuku, Slandele Motolani, because all of these might be follow ups. Okuku, Ulianda, Guzu Tolan. Right, and then Gupta Uzav for now. Let's go in that order. Kuku, um, let me quickly find you. I've asked you to mute you. Go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I think the answer from Joy was was okay, uh, satisfactory. Okay. And I think Rosie shared some insights there on the chat. That would benefit you. So, thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to comment on. Um, the issue of cryptos and um, the other questions that came from from the participants that raised that question. Um, crypto cryptos are just um, you know forms of digital currency. There's so many of them and so forth. So whatever questions, doubts, and views we, 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 we hold about crypto, we need to appreciate the fundamental principle that, for example, a Bitcoin is, is currency. There is no way a currency like a rand or a US dollar can be a scam. Now, the, a lot of issues emerge around um, how these currencies, these digital currencies are being used and manipulated online and primarily on the basis of the fact that these are digital and therefore prone to a lot of uh, abuse, scams and shenanigans online. So, so we need clarity of, of thought there. The problem may not be with the currency itself. The problem would be with what the currency is being used for and and the platforms in which the currency is being manipulated and so forth. So whatever reflections, research views and so forth need to, need to appreciate uh, that fact. So you can, for example, convert your rands to your, whatever crypto you want to convert it to and back to the rand and so forth. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and some people have actually registered um, good gains with that. If you look at the price of the Bitcoin today, it's over a million rands or so, if I'm not mistaken. Whereas when that thing started, I think um, when I started to know about the Bitcoin, I think it was about it was about 700 rands or so, the value. But it's been shooting all the way up. So we need to be able to separate the currency from from the abuses that the currency is subjected to. Uh, that, that is as far as I can go there. Um, maybe the issue of um, property and um, should we be buying and selling? And, selling? Hmm. and the issue of evangelism. And yeah, maybe we need to, to consolidate really our Christian perspective. Um, I think we need to be leading lives. Uh, in such a way that being relevant in our here and now is not mutually exclusive with the fact that we are living in anticipation for the soon return of Jesus. Mm. If, 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 if we hear that Jesus is coming next year or next week, and then immediately we feel we need to change mm. our approach to life, then there's, fun, there's something fundamentally problematic with that. Mm. So, so we, we, we need to lead holistic Christian lives where being relevant and being God-fearing is not separate from preparing for the coming of Christ. And therefore, I think if we can take out or exit the mentality, this departure lounge mentality to say uh, we are in the departure lounge waiting for Christ to come and evacuate us from planet Earth to heaven, if we exit that, we will be fine. So that we do good, live right, just for the case, for the basis of doing right and living right, not because Jesus is coming. It's Jesus coming. must come whenever and find us doing doing right. I think that's the mindset that should help us. 
That's true. Hmm. Yeah, girl, I eat departure lounge mentality. It's a lot. Let's go to Luanda. Luanda, I've asked you on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Leandra. Thank you very much, Joy, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, I think, Joy, what you just said, Konamanje, it, it also helped me to also realize, Guti, three months ago when I did not have the business that I have started just now, mm -hmm. I could live with the little that I would be getting and I would be okay. I budget, when I do my budget, I write even popcorns. If I would mm. have 100 rand in my hand, I would come back for a 100 rand engine. I come back and I say, I bought popcorns for 13 rand. I bought this for five rand. I write each and everything. So maybe the problem right now is my expenses have become more, even though I'm not yeah. even getting those kind of popcorns and those kind of things that I would have had before, because now it's not like I am forced to assist with my sister, but because we stay together and she's unemployed, but because as she's unemployed, Mina, now I'm getting a salary, so I cannot close her out. I, I don't know, I, I, I really do not know. Maybe it's just me, putting pressure on myself again mm. at the same time on I have to do this because mm. I I don't know but I feel like I'm more struggling manje that I have money but when I had no money coming in I was okay I'm not sure if I'm making sense mm. you are Leander, you're Thank on you are no I yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. I don't. I was saying. Sorry about that, guys. I was saying. I don't know if you want to come in on those two comments, and then we'll take another three hands after this. That that's fine. And Ukuku mentioned, and that's why I said I don't want to venture into cryptos, okay. um, very much, right? And 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 why? It's because I have the issue with the valuation of the cryptocurrency. And whereas, if you are comparing other currencies. We know that the South African Rand, the valuation of the South African Rand is based on every other thing. It, it's based on things that are happening within the context of the South African market. Whereas e crypto, yes, it might have come in at those lower levels and it's now sitting at where it is. Number one, my issues are around the valuation of it. The second bit is around the liquidity. I have 1 million of it sitting there. How liquid is it? So unless, yes, there are innovations or there are acceptances in the market, which for me, remember, each country has, has got regulatory boundaries, right? We know that our currency and everything that we have is within the bounds of the reserve bank. There's, and, and there's the financial services sector that, that regulates. We've got regulations in each market. But with, with, um, with um, cryptocurrencies, like Bitcoins and stuff like that, where it's literally an, an international currency one. There could be issues around regulating it, which if the countries are coming up with ways of better regulating it, the better. So until there's much more evidence around the valuation of the money, until there's much more evidence around the liquidity of the currency, let me not say money, around the valuation of the currency, the liquidity of the currency, it's, it, it, you know, it's no use me having a million rand in crypto, but I can't use it. I can't, I can't, I can't liquidate it, right? And that's what I refer to by liquidity. There's no use. Um, and, and therefore, for, for, for me to be able to derive value from the growth of it, I need to be able to liquidate it at some point. So until all those things are clear around cryptos, I would say if you are not averse with, with, with crypto, don't venture into that market if you really want a straight answer. But if you want to explore and try it out, make sure that you understand the intricacies around your naive blockchain technology, around the, the, the regulation of the currency, around the liquidity of the currency. Make sure that you understand it and don't go with the wave of crypto. So unless you understand it, then I'd say venture into it. And then maybe just to touch on to what Ulianda said. Ulianda, you are definitely right. Sometimes when we have more money, we increase our expenses. When we think we have money, our expenses also rise. And that's probably where you're sitting in that you, you are now maybe not sitting down with your, with your spreadsheet anymore. And because you think actually in your head, you start planning for it. And then you forget about the popcorn that you, you bought the other day. And then you forget to go to, oh, 
So always sit down and say, if can you please buy kids in this one so this month? You've already have a target, you already have a plan and say this month, it won't be possible. Maybe next month or maybe the other month, but we have to go back to, um, you have to go back to that whole spreadsheet and planning around how you use that money. It's very important, no matter how little that money is. I saw a comment here saying, we don't even make enough to even have a spreadsheet. And that's a lie. You know, as much, as long as there is income coming in, you can't say you can't budget. You have to budget. Particularly if even worse, you are blessed because you don't have rent to pay. Um, whatever money is coming in, you need to plan for it. Because money relevant. Money that is not planned for, the money that you don't plan for, or that is not planned for in terms of its use, it ends up being spent on, on things that are not necessary. So always plan for your money. Sit down and plan and say, this is what's coming in. This is what I want to achieve. And this is how I'm going to achieve it. Doesn't matter how little is coming in. You have to always plan. Use that spreadsheet. Even if it's 3,000 Rand that is coming in, use that use a spreadsheet because then that means with that 3,000 rand your list of expenses is going to be lesser lower Ganjan. so always um use that okay 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 thank you so much do you see sense what you have done now you pushed joy to actually you know entertain the cryptocurrency and i don't want to and i can see mr x is saying cryptos are liquid you must just tell me what he bought with them and tell me what you have bought to date if once i see someone buying a house with crypto i'd be very happy and in south africa I'd be very happy hey guys stop putting joy in the corner Entire repent my brother uh, because now i don't want to entertain the discussion for exactly so i don't want to entertain not- because we've got different views this is not the platform, okay? So I see you again, you challenge. Yes. Uh, with that being said, now we have the first, in fact, Mta, he needs to repent. Mta, wait, so that's the name. Can we start with Zaza, Van Hidden, and Mta, in that order? Zaza, Van Hidden, and Mta. Zaza, let's go, for us to unmute you. Zaza? Okay. I- and then she mutes herself. I've asked you on mute you, Zaza. Yes, I've I've uh, I've been unmuted. Hi guys. Okay. Hi, Hello. Um, I just want to share a few things. I have a very not a good, not the best, but I have a good financial background with uh, financial management and um, saving and all. I started saving personal testimony before I get to my um, uh, my contributions. Uh, I started saving when I was very young. I've been I've been financially literate since I, I can't remember maybe primary school or so. So every money I used to get, I would have to account for it every month and ask myself, what is it that I spent the day, uh, <clears throat> sorry, per day or per week? Um, if, uh, if I get an allowance for the week, uh, do I really need to spend it or can I carry easy lunchbox going to school? So I... I was privileged to, be, to, be, to have that knowledge when at a young age. And when I went to varsity, I uh, was one of those uh, students that were not so fleshy. I got a job when I was doing my first year and the second year actually. And I decided not to tell my sister about it because she felt I wasn't going to be able to, to, to balance the two work and, and, and my studies. So, I continued with my work for like two years without her knowing, and I was still getting my allowance from her and and um, and saving as well. So by the time I finished my undergrad and part of postgrad, I had saved around 100K, 100,000. And uh, yeah, it was easy for me because I'm not a flashy person. I was that, that student that we, Techies, like I would wear all stars the whole week and <laughs> and carry my backpack. I wasn't um, influenced or pressured into doing things. I wasn't really into doing them. So for me, saving was easy. So for in the space of like five years, I was able to 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 save around hundred k. 
which I was able to spend it the following year when I decided to go back to school and I didn't have a job and yeah, long story short. So then I started working and, and working showed me flames. And um, now I have an income, instead an income and I realized that the income is not enough. Saving is very difficult. Uh, saving, especially if you're not, um, with my financial background and saving background, I, I should have been, you know, be able to save enough and I was supposed to adjust easily when I went to the corporate, but it became very difficult because of expenses, expenses. When I was in high school, when I was in varsity, I, there were no expectations, but now when I started working, I had to take care of some people. I had to give away some monies. Then saving became a very difficult thing. And I'm not someone who sits down and writes a budget. I do my budget in my head and it works for me. And then <clears throat> fortunately I moved to a poverty stricken area where it is extremely difficult for people to save. Uh, so I understand where Luanda is coming from. I'm going to share some stats um, now on, on the poverty lines and the poverty stricken areas, actually not poverty stricken areas. Let me just say, share this. We are currently on almost 60 and 17 million people um, that's ultra poor people. Uh, they live and they survive under 3,500. So you find a, a household that has an income of, of 3,500. And they are four children who go to school, who need to eat, who need to go to, uh, who need to go, who need, who need clothes. And then you ask yourself, from that 3,500, you ask someone to save. So how, how possible is that? It's uh, as much as we say that it is, it's impossible. And, but to look at the real, real, sorry, realities of uh, such uh, situations, a person earns 3,500 and the person stays where I'm staying and they work in Pretoria, which 1,000 goes to transport per month. They have to eat at work. They have to buy their children food every month. In with a 2,500, what exactly are you going to buy for four, children, four people in the household? Um, then we have, uh, which is another 18 million, which who are survivors? These are people that are earning between 3,500 to 8,000. Yeah, these are survivors. We, we thinking these people maybe might be renting, uh, might be having, uh, accounts maybe trying to survive but how do they save which is a very 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 tough uh, situation then we have the middle class who and who have low more many expenses and uh, they're struggling to to balance so coming to Uluanda, <clears throat> she says that it's very difficult Honestly, if she puts her salary and she says she mentioned about 3,000 rand, she is assisting basically six people, six people that is four children and two adults with that amount. How, how realistic can that amount uh, and we, we amount can, can stretch her and we say that we need to save, which is, I, I don't know, I don't know. It is very difficult, but. Um, but what, <clears throat> what has worked for me, I realized that uh, it's, it's not difficult. When I started working, and like I said, it has been extremely difficult for me to save. But then I decided that I'm going to start small businesses. No matter how small, I can literally sell everything. So um, multiple streams of income to augment your income uh, is very important. No matter how small it is, no matter how embarrassing those things are, we need to do them. So I would say Uluyan has an income, has a salary, use that salary as a basis, then move to other things that you can sell. Sell masks, sell sanitizers, sell anything. I. I, I, I would advise you to do that. It's um, 
to augment your, your salary and you will see how far it will stretch you. And as well, you need to balance whatever you whatever you're getting and um, with the expectations. I think sometimes we 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 struggle, we struggle to to balance our our finances because of the black tax and expectations. She was okay with she was okay not she was surviving without an income but now she has an income she has siblings she has a siblings a sibling that has children and there are expectations she needs to take care of the home and she has uh she has to take care of herself as well and her children so how possible would it be for her to save with that 3000 rand it's i don't know it's um it's not easy Okay, and I'm going to comment on the saving and saving with the bank. I think personally, it's working for me. I'm a risk a risk taker. I risk. I I think I've lost about over fifteen thousand uh, with with uh, with uh, taking risk and. Uh, investing and all that but if you are someone who is not willing to risk or to lose any of their finances please do not invest anyway take your money to the bank and be comfortable with that seven percent i would advise you that take be comfortable with the seven percent until you come to a comfortable point where you can say that going to lose three thousand rand or one thousand rand if you are willing to lose it and you feel would you not you're not gonna feel like you're dying after 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 spend losing that thousand rand then you can start investing buy easy equities and all that but if you're not please stay with the bank is seven thousand seven seven percent can you are safe there you're safe there and you, no one really is gonna bother you and you know what your money is safe and you'll be okay. And I, I can't remember what else I wanted to talk about, but yeah, that's basically it. So sometimes we need just to be realistic. When we talk about uh, saving and uh, spreadsheets, we need to be open-minded and we need to come out of our comfort zone. Sometimes we speak out of a privilege, a point of privilege. We should think outside the box. I came to this place where I'm staying at and I see poverty stricken your families on the daily. And I understand when someone says, I have 50 rand, I cannot save. I have 100 rand, I cannot save. If you have 50 rand and you want to save 10 rand and a child comes and says, mama, and what do you say? Then we, we need to, to, to consider such situations as well. I don't know, I think I was all over, but you, I hope you got the gist of what I was trying to say. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Zaza. It's, it's well aligned. Every, everything will just fit into its own piece on the puzzle. So I'm going to ask Ufan Hidden and then Ola Amina. Ufan Hidden, go ahead. I'm assuming we can go. Um, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> OK. Um, thank you so much, Joy. Um, so I want to comment about two things. I want to comment about black tax as well as saving versus investing. So with the black tax, you know, um, I, I, this is my philosophy about black tax. And also, it's also practical as well. If black tax, guys, um, we can discuss further. But if black tax here too must empower people. Exactly. So whenever we're doing a black tax, if you are supporting people, unless if those people are disabled mm. and, too, and too old to be productive, the black tax of Abandu who are able-bodied should be empowering rather than creating a dependency. Thank so you. sometimes it will take us to have conversations. It's uncomfortable, guys. I know it's uncomfortable. Once you create the expectation for people that you'll be handing over money to them, they will get used to that. In fact, um, I read a book that says that sometimes handouts um, 
kill the, the desire in people to go by us pandemic. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes. A handout without any expectation of work, of trying something, it actually kills the spirit so moon to, to go out and fight and fight for their life. So if black tech guys, let's sit with the people that were assisting and Siboni Sane Ama ideas. Can we start something that is gonna give us e income, even if it's 100 Rand extra or 200 Rand extra? You, you, we need to help people to stand on their two feet. And, and, and maybe, we, maybe we need to, to sit down and actually eat budgeting and, and, and say, look, this is how much I'm bringing in. How can you help me to help you? I'm earning 3,000 rand. And we are four of us or six of us on this 3,000 rand. How can we help each other so that this 3,000 rand can stretch, can, can do more? Can, can we start something? Can we, can we sell something? That's, that's, that's the black tax part. Then the second part, I want to speak about um, saving and investing. So, so the reason, so saving is for short term. Mm -hmm. Saving is for short term. And, and um, if you save your money for longer periods of time, there's something called inflation. You, you might, let's say you go and put in 100,000 Rand in the bank. Fine, you're gonna have your 100,000 Rand but over time, that 100,000 rand is becoming worthless because of something called inflation. And, and if you are a saver, in the end, you're going to lose. If you are only a saver, if you only ever save your money and say, I'm scared to invest, I don't want to invest, it's too risky. You are saving is risky in the long term because of inflation. So, so so, so um, uh, investing is risky in the short term, but in the long term, as Joy said, the, the risk decreases as your timeline grows. Mm -hmm. And the reason why a lot of people retire without enough money is because they didn't take enough risk when they were young. Too much of their money is sitting in stock fells too much of their money is sitting in savings accounts and it's not growing. And inflation is increasing as Joy showed us in the, in the first slide. But the inflation is increasing at a rapid pace. Our incomes are not increasing. And then you take that same income, put it in a savings account, you are losing money as years go by. Even though it's safe, yes, it's 7%. Actually, you're lucky. It's not, you seven, find, it's not seven. It's not seven. You'd be lucky mm -hmm. to find a savings account that's going to give you 7%. It's way less than that. So I think, I think um, um, not taking risks is more risky, especially when you're young, because mm -hmm. we have time for the markets to recover if they go down. We are young enough. To, to, to ride out that volatility because we are young. Mm. The people who should be risk averse are older people who are retired or are retiring. But the young people, 30s, 40s, we should be taking more risk. And if you need guidance, contact an independent financial okay. advisor. Somebody yes. who doesn't work at a financial institution, someone who's independent with the CFP qualification. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Nozi. Thank you so much. Hey, for too long. <laughs> losing its purpose. All right, Kolane, you just round it up for now. And then we are gliding with we are starting the process of gliding out. Kolane. Hi, thank thank you. Thank you, Mkonzi, for that one. Um, a disclaimer. Somebody's using my stage name. Mr. X, I keep, I keep posting on my comments and you keep saying oh, the <laughs> I, I'm just enjoy our Not you. So that's my stage name for other activities, Mr. X. <laughs> uh, okay, um, I don't know if you guys can hear me properly, uh, but there's a couple of things I want to say. Can you hear me? 
Okay, cool. As uh, one time in a, in a group that I'm in, we we asked a question: Can you marry with ten thousand rands? You're earning straight ten thousand rands. Can you get married? So we started doing a budget for a guy who earns ten thousand rands every single month, and we saw that he who wants to get married at a ten thousand rands monthly salary mm. is a dangerous thing. You're very dangerous. We're living the life of spin. We are feeling that spin. We are blood, right? Um, and 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 we saw that it's it's it's, it's impractical to actually even try to do that. Now. Joe, you've spoken about middle class, and here we have an array of different uh, financial bandwidths. Um, the high earners, the middle class, the stories from, um, you know, Elokshin, you know, poor areas to typical middle class suburbs. But we also have people that are still stuck in those places, um, still not earning enough. And the question that came through from Utunganda was, here's a guy, here's a, a, a lady who earns 7,000 rands. Let's budget for that. The, for me, it, the, the pain is, it's not that people don't want to budget. It's because there's nothing to budget, right? Um, I would love to, I hear you and totally understand you. I'm going to do my spreadsheet. And at the end of the day, I have minus on my account, on my spreadsheet. I need an extra 5,000 on top of the fact that I've budgeted everything. And, 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 and I don't know if living a frugal life is one of the ways to go. This is a thing that we need to discuss here as well. Um, is there any financial independence that ultimately comes through when I have cut out everything? There's, some, there's a program on TV, uh, I think it's called Cheapskate, right? Now, those people go out of their way to make sure that they save as much as they can. Like, out of their way to save as much as they can. And we speak about things like, People should increase their income and stuff like that. that. Those are abstract things. What are you guys saying? Increase my income. I'm speaking from that level. Well, increase my income how? What do I do? Okay, invest. Invest where? Well, how? What do I do? I, I'm in this program and I want to learn. I want to know that, okay, after this, I'm going to do this and this. People have said, okay, cut the expenses. I've cut until I cannot cut no more. If I could cut my, 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 my arm and sell it, I would. I definitely would. So I've done literally everything on the book to make sure that I save and have enough or whatever, but still things are not holding up as well. And let's appreciate the fact that a lot of the things that we go through is because of the economy that we're in, government policies and stuff like that. Um, you, you have you have situations, or you, we have, you've got China, for an example. I was reading an article, I think, during the week that I think nine, that's a country with 1.2 billion people. I think 98% of those people are living above the poverty line. In other words, only 2% of Chinese can be said to be extremely poor. And, and according to the world, I think it's the financial uh, what, what standards day, those poor in China are not as poor as the financial standard says. So government policies influence all these things as well. And so how then do you have that personal financial uh, literacy or, or rather, how do I then practicalize this lesson and say, I earn 7,000, can we break down my money? Where do I live with 7,000? What do I eat with 7,000? What do I dress with 7,000? What do I, uh, uh, um, how do I pay and, and do the whole black text thing with 7,000, right? How do I do this, all these things? And we speak about, uh, I hear someone says, yeah, I know, but you're good in math and target. And I do that. That's for me, something that I do on my side. And that's okay. That's my stage name. That's fine. But I'm looking at other people that probably are, are in situations where, listen, I don't know what else to go to. No? What do I honestly do from this particular perspective? People are, are struggling, honestly, out there. COVID has shown us. And it's a good thing we're having this lesson post-COVID. Because now we have seen that we are, we are not as safe as we thought we were. That jobs are fleeting. Today I have it, today, tomorrow I don't. That money I have it today, tomorrow I don't. That whatever I thought. There were people that were earning really good salaries, had really good jobs that we thought were secure. Jobs that we thought were so secure. I got a friend of mine, he's a doctor. And he was crying. He's like, dude, understand how stressed I am. Even in my field, things have closed down. And I'm wondering, 
doctor. Things are closing down. And it was very practical about, he told me his story, like, this is one, two, three, four, five, this is what's happening. And I'm not earning enough and all. So, so how then do I, I, I do this? For me, one of the questions to ask, answer, this is Joy, and everybody else is, here's 7,000. Can we break down 7,000, please? And see if this is practical for this guy or for this young lady. Can I go ahead, Leander? Leander? Okay, I'm assuming Leander is on mute, and I'm I'm assuming you can you can hear me. Um, I will start with your comment, Gazaza, and then we'll we'll just go down without without dwelling too much onto it as well. Also, as I mentioned, that she budgets in her head. For me, that's that's the biggest mistake to do because that's where you don't really account for everything that you buy. And that's how we make it practical. Sitting down, and guys, that's why, it, you know, and, and, and maybe I just need to share a background of myself because, yes, it, it's, it's easy to say people talk from a point of privilege, but I, growing up, maybe just to share a little bit of my background and story, just to, to help you understand Wuti, um, where we all come from and that we have similarities. Is that growing up, my mom was, was a teacher and then she, she quit teaching and she went to retail uh, when she Joy, can you hear us? Okay, let me do it. All right, uh, let me unmute quickly. I think the end is full and sorry about this uh, technology glitch here. We need to budget for a better um, you know, signal. Thank you so much. I don't know what happened there. Um, but I was actually just still sharing with you. My mom had to quit her job, essentially. I'm just making it practical so that you at least understand when I talk about breaking the cycles of financial literacy in our families and why it's so important to plan. Um, so she, she had to quit. And, and literally my mom said, because they knew where we were and they were threatening with her kids' lives and because they, they knew what is fun that. So my mom had to leave her job. And, and in leaving her job, and obviously she was unemployed at the time. So she had to figure out a plan. I can tell you there was nothing my mama, my mother wasn't doing to make sure Wuti, we go to school. My mother was cooking. I think she will cook. I am a family in a way feel. She will cook. I think she will come back. Because I'm a play day, I tell I'm something about 11. Come back. My mom, you know, you, you get a stockpile, same bathroom. That, that are secondhand clothes, that you, you go at yours, you get that. Mom would go through that whole cycle. I told her those bags of, of the secondhand clothes, a plastic in a nyama, CBs, and I think CBs are what to or whatever, whatever we call it now, it yours. Go back, come back with that, reassemble those clothes, wash those clothes, iron those clothes, and go sell it house to house. There was nothing literally my mother wasn't doing to ensure which there's food there's food on the table. And not only that, that we, we also go to school. Not only that, and the C5 ending, just to make it practical, C5. So I'm just basically saying, Guti, who knows about how your black tax needs to be empowering someone. It is something that needs to be practical because in all honesty, if we don't do that, we are actually destroying other people. You, we need to, you need to be able to say, what is it that I'm good at? I can go and sell a maquinia. Literally, a ring can maquinia fly. I'm going to wake up exceni, ninkove, nyoteng, samakunia, makunia fly. And that's how you augment your salary. 
And that's how you augment your standard. And forget the fact you would see manji, at least we've got social grants for kids if you earn below a certain brackets or if you don't earn anything at all. So we need to apply these things practically in our heads and say, how do I augment my salary? If I'm earning so much, how much are my expenses supposed to be practical? Right? Because in, in, in all honesty, we, we, we tie ourselves in unrealistic commitments. Um, yeah, 7,000 is a lot in time. You were talking about 7,000 7, is a lot. It's a lot of money. To, and when I say a lot, in a sense, you would say you can stretch it out and it depends how wise you are. Number one, you need to understand understand the grocery markets and the sales that happen. We as would say, um, this week, Usually, but I must say one one in climbing poop, you buy in, you buy in poop, you know what is so ten in poop, nan, nekabi shoke, it's fine, we should be able to survive on that. But it's saying in poop, and in you go and you say next week, so you need to be able to plan out your budget and be able to understand the trends in the market because, in all honesty, nowadays, every week there's some, some uh, saving or some, some sort of saving in my shop that you are getting, and you need to be able to, to be aware of those. Uh, specials that are taking place in my shop and plan your um, grocery shopping around those those savings understand those trends and save according to those things so when people think Uguzi, yes right now yes you might be privileged but you understand Uguzi, there are there are ways of actually um bettering your life and and i'm not saying Uguzi, you can always make it practical but we also need to be real with ourselves and say am i am i doing enough am i doing enough right, to, to be able to augment the little that is coming in. Because, and, and that's why I say, Wuti, the moment we start tying ourselves in and locking ourselves into debt, I say, Wuti, that leads to mental, uh, mental illness issues or mental health issues. And once you are in that depressed state, yes, you won't think about these things. But right now we are saying, yes, we find ourselves in the situation. You are here on 230 Conversations. We are having this discussion. We are having this talk, which could be to some people sobering. And then you go back and you say, how do I prevent the same thing from happening to my children? Why, why don't I start those very conversations? So that your child is away. And I told her she won't get any new techies this year because those shoes she had and they were supposed to last her the whole year. She's very careful because she knows if she loses something, I, she, while I start let's see one, she came back with it the following day because she went to school barefoot. And those are some of the practicalities of the things that we need to also teach our children so they understand the importance and the value of money. And it starts as simple as that. You need to value your things. You can't come back and say, every day when you pencil. Don't every day as umdana. So you teach them to value those things. You can't always be losing because if we are in Lasha, so in other words, you need to be able to take care of what you have today. And those are what we pass down to our children. And we need to start teaching them and making it practical to our children. You, we have to try harder, guys. And I know it's hard. And that's why I say I don't dispute the fact that a lot of South Africans, we are going through issues. But if you're comparing our to South Africa, it's also a bad basis because we know say, most of us, in all honesty, we don't want to get up. We are choosy around the type of jobs that we want. We are choosy about so many things but we want to demand. And when, who do we look at? We look at some of our family members. So it's, 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 we, it's, we have to guys try, and I, I'm speaking about this because it, it's becoming too emotional now, but we need to try honestly guys and say, what is it that I can do to actually make it better, to make it better for myself? I, I, I once shared with you guys, with Mina, I don't shop for summer clothes in summer. I shop for summer clothes in winter when that's all, it's all the special. So you save and that's where you save. Instead of you using that money now, you save it and say, okay, actually, I can actually survive with this one coat for the rest of this winter until you win Cipel. And then when everything goes down, you buy another coat. So it's about being able to sit down and assess your situation and say, with the current situation that I'm in, how am I able to actually make it better and make it work with what I have and augment if I can? So it's about us trying harder, guys. I think. If, if, if really, in which I, like I said, I don't want to take that away from anyone, but I do still think we would sit down and assess, have a relationship with your money. Because if you don't have a relationship with your money, it, it, you, your money will go to places on as us. Sit down and, and assess and face that reality and say, okay, actually, I've got more expenses than my income. What does that mean? How do I then make sure that I grow my income? Right? And sit down and actually make plan. 
and sit down and, and have that plan and have that deep conversation because if you run away from facing that reality when when are you going to face it so make that time to face your reality guys thank you so much joy for that one make that time to to face your edge leander has fallen off i think it's fcom doing the the things right there um so we're going to be gliding towards the end okay so so here are the take-homes that we're getting um well don't be choosy i think that's the thing that that's affecting your typical middle class not not middle class but middle age people from the 20s maybe to early 40s and stuff like that uh being choosy uh i can't sell perfumes i can't do this outside my job so let's try and make sure that we find those uh what the term is hustling we find those uh hustle jobs out there and um you know try to build up an income base that's more sustainable. Let's, let's, let's talk to our family members. If it's black text that's affecting us, let's budget really. I know someone, Joy, who, who says uh, they fear budgeting because it will show them so much cracks into their financial system. They fear budgeting big time. You know? and, and again, how safe is it to, 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 to depend on a salary? And, and by the way, we're speaking to the chief financial officer of Discovery. So I had to put that joy, right? Um, and, and, and so we, we, these are real things. How safe then are we depending on our sellers and all that? One of the couple of things here on the chat here and also some things on Facebook. Tandika says, you know, one of the things that will help you is to, uh, you know, do specials and just what Joy was saying. And she's putting us to say, you know, Black Friday is coming here in South Africa, stockpile groceries and detergents, start saving for next year, Black Friday. You can get a gift card, put 100 rands every month and use gift card on Black Friday. Or when they have a sale, a sale, right? Uh, know the original price of groceries helps with buying when they say it's on sale or promo. I think what we're learning is, is, to, is, is to have a very intimate relationship with money. Exactly. This loose kind of relationship is not helping anyone. Am, am I right, Joy? I think that's, that's exactly. what we're learning. Yeah, we, this, yeah, this loose relationship they have with money, this here and there, not being serious about our relationship with money is not working out at all. Tandika also shared a couple of things here. And I have a question here that comes from Mundik Sam as we glide. It says, I once saw something referred to as the 50-40-10 rule. Okay, 50-40-10 rule to personal finances. That is 50% on needs, 40% on investments, and 10% on wants. If I may ask, what are the other tried and tested variations to such a rule? Because this one seemed uh, not meant for a black child like me. All right. I want to respond to that. But before you do, there's something that Tabang said on Facebook here. Yeah? And uh, he says, um, I'm hoping Tabang is a male. Yeah. The world as it is has a system that is made sure black people at the bottom of the food chain. Okay. There are some biblical models of financial systems that practically made sure people move up the food chain. Example, the year of Jubilee or seven years period where debts would be wiped. Can't we include such forms in our financial systems to ensure that we all grow that's a question that comes through i don't know if anyone wants to respond to that uh is something to say but joy you can go ahead and, and and maybe respond to to such things here um so what tabang is put across and also what we did some 50 40 10 rule and and all let us take it out from there thanks Renata. i think you you were spot on by saying it really requires a personal relationship and if your money is that important to you you will make time for it and why am I saying this? If you look at any other relationship, um, that for any relationship to thrive, there needs to be an investment in time. So if you don't invest time for that relationship, that relationship is not going anywhere. And that's exactly why you need to invest time with your money. Sit down and have that one-on-one -on -one with you and your finance. If it's a family budget, have that time. It takes time to establish such things, but have that time and sit down to, to actually break it down and say, what are some of the things that you're really wasting is cut or wasting and you guys, I promise you try it. And if, if I can put maybe a thousand rand on the table, if you go and you try it and you come back and you say, um, it, it, 
like our wonanga anything when that you are probably misusing or you didn't spot anything or you didn't learn anything from that exercise let's let's do that but i try it guys have that relationship make time with your finances and revisit your finances on an ongoing basis and i think also that that other principle maybe someone else can also touch on it but for me what that principle of this of the year of jubilee was teaching me is that actually as a people we shouldn't have debt that goes over or we shouldn't be locked in debt for more than seven years because also I don't think we would see um, the, the idea or the context was that people should get stuck for over seven years, you know, with the hope that the debt will be written off. All right. So for me, that principle is actually teaching me whatever debt I take, I need to make sure that I'm paying it off within seven year, within a seven year period. So if it's something that I can't pay off within seven years, then that means obviously I'm locking myself in for, for, for whatever, right? And, and I'm just getting myself into trouble. And, and that's the lesson I got, Mina, from the year of Jubilee, is that seven years should be literally the maximum for us children of God in whatever debt that we take out. And um, that, that was essentially the lesson. Someone else might have a different view, but that's really what I took from it. Um, yeah, I think X, we, we, we covered most of, of those pointers. I think you can you can um, get on to closing, I suppose. All right, no, beautiful. Thank you so much, Joy, for that one lovely one that you just put across. Um, we have some, you put a lot of uh, biblical verses um, and, and, and one of them that I just noted now is the lessons from the end. Um, you know, Proverbs chapter six, verse eight to 11. Now, I don't know what version I'm reading, but it's called, okay, it's called the message. I don't want to, it's, it's, it's interesting. It says, you lazy fool. <laughs> Yo, guys, where are these versions coming from? You lazy fool. Look at an ant, watch it closely. Let it teach you a thing or two. Nobody has to tell it what to do. All summer, it stores up food. At harvest, it stocks piles provisions. So how long are you going to laze around doing nothing? How long before you get out of bed? A nap here, a nap there, a day off here, a day off there. Sit back, take it easy. Do you know what comes next? Just this. You can look forward to a debt, poor life, poverty, your permanent house guest. Oh, you must just love this version. Right? So, so I, think, I think these are the warnings that are biblical. I think the King James Version is a bit lighter. This one is like this guy was really angry when he was translating this. So, so we, we can really get quite some huge nuggets onto all of this. It's very important to, 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 to work extremely hard. One of the discussions that we had during the week with some of my friends was how the, the influence of church on financial decisions. Um, I, I think it will be very important then for every church to, to teach proper financial management and proper acquiring of income. Sometimes our church is more interested in the, in the tithe, but not interested in the income that makes the tithe. Very, very, very vocal about what we give to it than what we make so we can give to the church. So, so I think it's important then to sit down um, and, and with friends, church members, how can we make our lives better? How can we have more money? How can we be more wiser with the money that God has given us? How can we do this and that even better? And, 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 and sometimes we teach people that if you give tithe, this will happen. Sometimes things don't happen, regardless of the tithe that you've given. What can I do better to help my life through? And I just want to glide towards the end uh, with all of this. Let me just read one or two things here. That says, you know, it was as Ufan Eden says, um, you know, a salary is not definitely not enough for most of us. We need our salary to make extra money. So look into what you have. I saw something today, uh, one lady that I know, she started baking and she was self-taught. In fact, there's two men that I know, self-taught. And, and YouTube is our university. Yo, Jesus, YouTube can teach you so much that you can. So many things, how to bake. She's self-taught. And this self-taught lady now, um, I think she was featured in some, some, some huge, um, I don't know, project that she had. I saw it on Facebook. And she's self-taught. So teach yourself these things, you know, so much that you can do out there and make quality. If you do quality, people will notice you. If you do quality things, people will notice you. Go out there and learn. Just stop watching videos of people dancing on YouTube. Let's stop being on TikTok for useless things. Let's go out there and say how to, how to. 
Then from there on, we can learn a thing or two. YouTube is the future of everything. The long and short of our lesson today. And we are learning more on the business month on that. Here's a question, Joy, maybe just one uh, thing or two to finish up our lesson. What is your take or advice on education or investment funds? I have a few from Alan Gray, Momentum and Old Mutual. My weakness is after a few years, I go take the money when going through a difficult uh, financial uh, patch. All right, Joy, what's your take? Yeah, and, and I think we, we have we need to have different vehicles for different things, right? We have, um, and especially if you can, you have a pool for rainy days. You have a pool for, if, if, if your, I guess your financial goal was education, right, for, for the kids, and hence you took an educational endowment fund. If that is the plan, you stick to the plan. So in other words, if, if, if you had another pool on the side to say, okay, uh, for my rainy days, I want this, um, I'm going to create this additional fund and you do that. So you create different, um, you, you create different thingies, pockets or buckets for your financial goals. And if it's an endowment, stick to it. Because again, like you say, if you take it before time, especially if it's an endowment, usually buzz five years before you can actually tap into it. But if you tap into it earlier, there are penalties that you would pay towards it. So those are some of the things that you need to be aware of and you need to be careful um, around. And, and X, I just wanted to go back to one of the comments that you mentioned about your, your doctor friend. And that's exactly why it's, it's very important that that comment ties back to the biblical lesson that we're finding that, uh, you know, preparing ourselves for an unknown future is very important because we don't know, like a lot of us, if we were to lose our salaries today, I promise you our houses are going to be repossessed, our cars, and this is going to happen within a space of three months. Why? Because we don't have anything in the kitty to last us maybe six months while we figure out what we are going to do. Literally, everything is tied. And that's where our biggest problem is. And we need to make sure what we plan. Planning for the future is that it's, it's important. I can never emphasize that enough, is that sit down and plan, especially if you are getting something and you are dependent on your salary. If that salary disappears, which is what we've seen with COVID, either salaries got cut or salaries disappeared completely. If that is your situation, would you be able to survive an entire six months while you, you recoup, while you think about the next plan? Most of us, like I say, within three months, everything will be gone. Why? Because we failed to plan when we had the time to plan. So do not waste time any longer plan for an unknown future, guys. We need to be ready for whatever other obstacles might find us in the future. I'm not saying we'll be ready, ready, but at least we, it needs to find us prepared for, for whatever it is that might come up in the future. Um, so it's, it's very important things, guys. Find something to do. Uh, we spend lots, lots, lots of our time. If you were to check on your social media, um, you, you know, most of these phones have got checker apps that actually check your screen time. Just check how much time, you, where you're spending your time and see whether you can redirect that time to something that is actually going to benefit you in the end, as opposed to um, something that just makes you envy someone else's life or want, you know, to find other things that are going to help and inspire, admire you and help you grow in other areas where we can actually make additional income. We've got, I believe we, if we are able to, we have, um, we have skills that we can use. Talk to Peramnand. Use that to your advantage. Ubeka Makekwa Kamnand. Use that to your advantage. You know. So let's 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 try by all means, guys. All right. Thank you so so much. Yeah. Um, a couple of people are helping out on the on the platform here, um, sending stuff that we can learn from. And maybe just as a last one, there to say to everyone, you know what? If, if you're if you're if you're into getting alternative um, alternative income, what what are, what are people doing out there? Maybe just write and type what you do. Maybe to help for someone to know what they can also do in that. I mean, th there's always a, a piece of the cake for everyone, honestly, right? So maybe people can type and like, okay, I do this, I do this, I do that, I do this and that. There are platforms where you can learn new skills. I think the couple that I just want to talk about here, 
Um, the Tashinga here, thank you, Tash, for that, says there's one called uh, Lend Digital uh, dot with Google. There's a, you sent the link. I'm going to just copy it on the Facebook panel as well so that the Facebook family also has that kind of thing. Um, Google Tire says Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y, is also a helpful to learn new skills and ultimately how to monetize them, you know? So all these things that you can learn, you can just try to what people do, uh, what you do here, uh, so that at least we know what you can um, uh, learn better. No, it says, learn about saving and investing by listening to podcasts um, and 230 conversations. Yes, no, I'm gonna add that. Learning to podcast <laughs> um, or radio shows every Thursday on Talk Radio 207, that's for us here in South Africa. Uh, and there's a personal finance show at 7 p.m. by Bruce Whitfield, um, right? Felix says, yeah, and Felix is in the UK, says, thanks to COVID, I have a new skill and it took me only 12 months. Yo, hunger yeah. is the mother of all inventions. I tell you, when you're hungry enough, you will know. Sandra says you can do online surveys. Here's what, thank you people, people like bringing this, I love this. You can do online surveys and review okay. websites online and get paid for it during your spare time. See? Online surveys, review websites online, get paid for it during your spare time. What else are we doing out there <clears throat> and, and all that? Um, um, so yeah, Betty says, read, let's read more financial books. Let's do that. Online jobs, that's uh, another link that I'm gonna just upload now uh, from Van Hedden. Yeah, a gig, gig smash and all that, okay? Uh, Betty says, I used to make candles and, uh, and so, yo, actually says, teach English to Chinese children. Yo, this I know personally. And this thing has money. Yo, yo, go to China, guys. Go to China and teach English. Just English to three-year-old Chinese girls and boys. Hi, bye, big, small. And you get yourself about 70, 80,000 rands a month. I know someone who's doing it personally. So please go out there and do what you need to do as much as you can. All right, start your own YouTube panel and monetize it. Uh, there you are, all these things. Um, and then Admire says also on, on industrial sewing machine. I know someone who's also doing uh, makeup. I think looking good is a, is, a, is a really, you know, it's money, it's money, it's money. Looking good, makeup, hairstyles, all that. Do all the things, right? And let's try to be financially wise. Um, as wise as serpents, but as humble, as doves, so goes the Bible. Do drop shipping, a lot of things. I think most of the things we'll discuss in the afternoon. Thank you so much, um, Destroy. Thank you. Really appreciate. Really appreciate. If you're in business as well, move, move with the times. Move with the times, you know? Business is now online. Move with the times. And you'll be able to, to pull through from there on. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Thank you for coming. Next week, we have got our advocate, Boysen Fize, coming through, please check our socials for the title of his lesson. And he's going to be talking again, everything business. And then I think on the last week, but another, um, we're going to get to let you know what's coming up on the last week. I just forgot on the name of the person that's coming through. It's our month of, um, of finances. Please do note that we will take a break in December um, as 2.30 conversations, a break in December, and then uh, rejuvenate ourselves back in January when we're now ready for another 11 months together with you as a family. Now, from here on, what I'm going to do is we're going to probably have a word of prayer. And, um, you know, and, 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 and from there on, we can, we can close our session. Um, I think let's just pray. We're praying for financial literacy. We're praying for wisdom in terms of, um, you know, using the skills that we have. It is not the, it, it, it's, the it's the servant that was given and, and, and buried his that eventually got the punishment. So you're given something, whether one or two or three, the master expects you to produce. All right, Joy, do pray for us. We hold our heads wherever we are and pray our kind and most gracious of Heavenly Father. We would like to thank you, dear Lord, for this privilege and opportunity that you have given unto us to gather, Father God, as your children, though virtually to learn, Father God, from each other and to really, Father God, try, um, you know, find ways 
to better our lives, Father God. Um, we do know that, Father God, in this very platform, we have people who are struggling, Father God, with their finances. Uh, we have people who do not know where their next meal is going to come from, Father God. Um, and, you know, we just are, we've got so many different challenges that we are faced with. And we just want to commit all of these things, Father God, to you. We want to ask, oh dear Father, that, uh, you know, you know the depths of our hearts and you know how much we really, you know, want, Father God, or aspire to actually, you know, live better lives, Father God, and lives that, Father God, you know, you will for us to live, Father God, that you want um, for us to experience, Father God, in this in this particular lifetime. So we just want to invite your presence in our lives, Mary We just want to pray and ask that you continue to guide us and that you continue to lead us, that may, as we, you know, learn all these lessons, may we be empowered, Father God, but above all, you know, may we also do, Father God, what we learn, and not only, Father God, sit on the information, that we have. May you know this week you give us, you know, um, the oomph and the energy to go out there, Father God, and to look out for what else is it that we can do, Father God, to make our lives better and to improve our lives, but not only for ourselves, but also for those in need around us, dear Lord. May you give us hearts that are open and willing to help others, Father God, hearts that are open and willing to give Father God, um, for Lord, you know, blessings flow from doing such, dear Father. We thank you so much for everything that you continuously do for us, even for the blessings that you, that you deposit into our lives unaware, Father God, um, to us. So we thank you so, so much for everything. May you continue to lead us, may you continue to bless this platform, and may it continue, Father God, to be far-reaching, dear Lord, um, you know, with all the, the great lessons, Father God, and that we receive on this platform. We thank you and may you bless the leaders, bless everyone in here, Father God, and may you be with us and our families, Father God. For this we ask and we pray in your name and your name alone. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, everyone, for, for coming through today. Um, just joy, thank you as usual. Um, thank you to your husband and to your daughter and to everyone who allowed you to, to be able to be with us today. Let's just do what we need to do, people. Uh, right now, I'm going to just um, quickly paste the things that were happening on the, the, the I think the link quickly on, on, on Facebook, and then I can close the Facebook as well. Um, and then also those that wanna come to Zoom, we're gonna do what is called the after scenes, which is just a quick thing where we just talk about more of what we're learning here. Nothing too hectic. I'm just going to finish up on, on copying and pasting the links now. Uh, Facebook family, there you have it. You can also, I'm going to paste the Zoom link as well. Just to Joy, you know you're not um, you're not forced to stay behind. Uh, you can always, you know, uh, you know, yeah, you're not forced at, as, uh, at all. So thank you so much, family. Thank you, everyone. We'll see each other think, soon enough next week. Those who want to stay behind for the after scenes, you can. I'm done with the pasting. And I'm going to close the live uh, feed on Facebook now. As soon as I close it, if you are a Facebook member and would like to come to Zoom to continue with this conversation in the after scenes, please do click on the link that I have just posted on right now. Otherwise, we'll see each other next week. God bless you all and amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen.